Hey guys, this is Harry from Zero FX, and in this video, we will see how to create a tune shader inside Blender. Along with that, we will see how to properly use image textures for tune shading, and also how to create this uneven outline for a more hand-drawn look. Okay, we are inside Blender now. This is just a simple Blender scene. We have an apple over here. We have a camera pointing right at the apple. And we have a simple point light lighting the scene. Ok, let's switch to the camera view. Coming to the material, uh, first make sure that you are in the viewport rendering mode. And also make sure that the render engine is set to AV. So the material over here is just a simple diffuse BSDF with an image texture plugged in. Which is this image over here. So let's convert this into a tune material. First, unlink the texture. Shift A and add a shadow to RGB node. Shadow to RGB node doesn't work with Cycles Render, so make sure you are in EV Render, otherwise this won't work. What Shadow to RGB node will do is, it will convert the shader into RGB color values and outputs that. Why do we want that? Because we want to control the color values using a color ramp node. So add a color ramp node and change the interpolation from linear to constant. Linear interpolation means uh, if there is a white value and there is a black value, so everything in between will be filled with gray values so that there will be a gradual uh, change from white to black. Constant interpolation means there won't be any values in between, so suddenly the white value will become a black value. So this will help to give that flat 2D look, which we can see in 2D animations. Okay, now let's shift the white point to control the white value, uh, something like that. Also, let's change the black value to a gray value. These are all just personal preferences. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's add the image texture. Hit Shift A and add a mix RGB node. Plug the color ramp into the color 2 and the image texture into the color 1. Change the blending mode to multiply and increase the factor to 1. Let's plug this into the output to see the result. Okay. <laughs> This just looks weird, I don't know why most of the tutorials actually leave it at this point. I mean, we have a photorealistic texture with a 2D shading. This just, <laughs> this just doesn't look convincing at all, at least to me. So let's convert this texture into a tune texture, which is very easy by the way. Add a color ramp node to the image texture. And change the interpolation to constant just like before. And adjust the white point to something like that, okay? Now let's give some color to the white and black values. So the white color over here is this yellow color over here. So let's pick that color. We can increase the value to make it bright. And the black is nothing but the red color. So let's select this red color. Maybe we can make it slightly darker. And we can make some adjustments until it looks good to you. So this is before and this is after. See, lots of difference there. Ok now time to give some outline to our tune art. First go to the material properties and add a new material. Let's rename this to line art. In the material window delete the principal BSDF and add an emission shader. Change the color to black. Now to add the outline, select the object and go to the modifiers tab and add a solidify modifier. Go to the normal section and flip the normals. And to assign this line art material to this solidified object, under the material section change the offset to 1. Now everything's black. In order to fix this or to see our apple, go to the material properties and in the line art material enable back face culling to make only the back faces visible. And to fix this shading artifact, set the shadow mode to none. There you go. Now we have an outline. Inside the solid frame modifier, I usually set the offset to zero. We can also increase the thickness of the outline. Now, the thickness is very uniform over here, which is not what happens when things are actually hand drawn. So we need to give some variation to the thickness. To do that, luckily inside the solid frame modifier, we have this vertex groups option. So what this will let us do is, the thickness will change based on the weight of the vertex. For example, if a particular vertex weight is 1, the thickness will be the value specified over here. 
If the vertex weight is zero, the thickness will be zero. To understand this a little bit better, let's switch to the weight paint mode. Now everything is blue, which means all vertices have a weight of zero right now. So to give some weights, go to the object data properties panel, add a vertex group and rename this to line art vertices. The name can be anything. Now go to the edit mode, select all the vertices and assign a weight of one. There you go, everything's red now, indicating that all vertices have a weight of one at the moment. Now let's give some random weight to each vertex. To do that, go to the modifier properties and add a vertex weight edit modifier. Make sure you place it above the solid frame modifier, otherwise this won't work, this is very important. Now inside this modifier, select the line art vertices as the vertex group. Here under the inference properties, we have an option to use an image texture to control the vertex weights. So go to the texture properties panel and create a new texture. Let's name this noise and from the rollout select a distorted noise texture. Go back to the modifiers and make sure that the noise texture is selected here. Now we don't see anything happening over here. Open the fall off properties and hit this button to invert the fall off. There you go. I really don't know why it's working but it's working. Now we can go back to the texture properties and change the size of the noise to control the weights. Mm, something like that looks good to me. Now go back to the modifiers and now for the final part, go into the solid frame modifier and select the line art vertices as the vertex group. Now observe closely over here. Let me delete the vertex group to show you this. When we select the vertex group, here and here it's becoming thin. Okay, now let's switch to the object mode to see the final result. There you go. We have an uneven outline and the factor over here will control this effect, which is pretty handy. We can also go to the texture properties and decrease the noise size to increase the unevenness. It's up to you, it's the all personal preference. And finally, let me show you something real quick. Uh, I forgot before. To the image texture, we can actually add more colors if you want. Like, I'm adding an orange color as an in-between color over here. So depending on your texture, sometimes you might need more colors and you can absolutely do that. And also, if you're facing any artifacts like these over here, change the offset in the solidify modifier to one and this will fix a lot of problems. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.